that's logo that's inside the pan. Uh, up here it has this kind of roll top closure and it just it's not as nicely closed as it would have been usually. Um, yeah, helmet, Petzl, Sirocco, lightest helmet on the market. I think this one is 100, yeah, it's 165 grams. I've been using this for many years. Great helmet for all your mountain sports activities. Then we have here, this is a Camp Alp 95 harness. Also, back then it was one of the lightest harnesses on the market. It's made for ski touring mainly. But I've abused it now for uh, Via Ferrata. And up here, this is the Edelrit Ultralight 2.1 kit. Uh, again, a Via Ferrata kit I've been using for couple of years, really happy with it, um, the lightest on the market, so just what I need, then my Via Ferrata gloves, um, I have two pairs, one that are just with the fingertips open from auto research and then I've got these uh, Hestra Via Ferrata gloves because I knew it's going to be a bit more colder so I thought closed gloves better. And because I was thinking I might make photos, I have this extra sling over here with which I could clip myself in and then hang off the wall to take photos because you shouldn't hang on the yeah, Ferrata kit, obviously. So, that's that. Oh yeah, my visor. This is a Arcturix Neutro visor. You've seen it in the videos, I've been wearing this also the whole day. Cool little weezer. This is a Go Rock field pocket, and in there I've got tech stuff. I have in there a spare Power Monkey power bank, Power Traveler power bank. I've got the release, I've got cables for charging, spare SD cards, spare batteries for the Sony camera and this is not a light pocket but it is a super durable pocket and it's I, I take this usually along because I usually if I travel by airplane somewhere I have all my gear in my carry-on and this is a really durable and easy pocket to put into my carry-on Go Rock GR1 pack so that's why it's in there and not in some lighter lighter pack water bottles uh, switched maybe last year to hydro flasks this is a half liter bottle from montaigne ridiculously expensive i think if you buy this it's 25 euros which is insane and this is the katadun b3 this is a water filter now if you follow me for any time you know that i'm not a user of water filters but this is so simple and easy to use that it convinced me the moment I, I tried it. So this is great and this is a half liter bottle. You just fill it with the water from the source, screw the cap on as I just did and then you can drink without any problems. It filters all the bad shit out and you are drinking clean, good water. Really great, light, around less than 70 grams for the whole pack thingy here. And that is awesome. Right, uh, Sony RX100 Mark IV, big review on the blog, just check that out. It's my go-to camera for everything. Uh, Petzl Tika RXP headlamp, also several years old already. Um, not the lightest option, but if you have shorter days in autumn or want to do photos at night or stuff like that, then I found this is a great choice. You can charge it via USB uh, with the power bank so you don't run out of juice when out on a trip. And yeah. Good headlamp. Right, we're getting to sleeping kit. This is the 
VD Alpstein 450 down. I've helped design this. I got this one also for free. Uh, so, but I didn't get paid. Sadly, I didn't get paid to tell you about this one. But really nice quilt, really warm, um, well made. Now it looks a bit like compressed because it's been too long in the bag. Um, yeah, like this a lot. What else can I say? It keeps me warm, has a lot of space, smart little details like this pocket here on top, which keeps the drawstring out of your face if you've sleep, slept in a quilt or in a sleeping bag and you put this around your neck like this and you draw the drawstring close to make it tight. You have like 10, 15 or more centimeters of cord swinging around in your face and it's not nice. Yeah. Um, I have planned to do a review on this so I'm not gonna talk now a lot about it. That are layers because I can't stand sleeping in the same shirt and the one that I'm hiking in, especially not in winter when it is a bit cooler. These are Arcteryx Phase Long Johns. These are the lightest Long Johns I own. They're synthetics, but they're nice, cozy, warm. They don't start to smell, especially if you only wear them when you're sleeping, which is exactly what I did. And a slightly thicker base layer for camp and sleeping. This is the Patagonia R1. Uh, again, it has this grid, grid fleece on the inside which means it wicks sweat away, keeps you warm, toasty, it has a great fitting hood, the hood zipper closes on the side so you don't have it in front of your mouth which is super annoying. Uh, yeah, great piece. Um, again, if you're in a market for a hoodie, this is certainly a piece you should consider. Then we have a down jacket. This is a PhD, I can't tell you the name. It's linked in the description below, so check it out over there. This has the water resistant um, shell, so even if it's snowing or raining, this doesn't get really wet, which is great. Um, two pockets, no hood, and yeah, super warm. Packs into its own pocket over here which it has been in the trip most of the time and yeah light light and really nice and finally the last piece of the sleeping system puzzle this is the Tamarest X term this I have also since since it came out so I guess four or five years, something like that. Many seasons slept on this in the winter, autumn, whenever I fear it might get cold, I take this. Um, light and warm, exactly what I like. Full length because I don't like if my legs are like making the at the knees this drop. Super uncomfortable. And then I got a bivy over here. This is a Wilderness Treadworks Cuban bottom sill nylon top bivy. Uh, very nice piece. Packs smaller than this, but yeah, I had enough space on the on the way travel home, so no need to compress it. Super small, really nice uh, bivy. And yeah, on those nights where you wanted to sleep outside, not in the tent, then that was great. Yeah, then we still got this lid pocket. So, okay, we have maps. We've got the Praxa Dolomiten, which was the second part of the trip, and the Sexna Dolomiten, which was the start with Tresime and the huts and stuff. So, um, yeah. Those two maps, 10 and 31, if you want to do the same trip, 
They're 850 a piece, which is super cheap for me because maps in Finland cost worth of 20 euros. Highly recommended. So this was a bit. Uh, usually don't carry a, a guidebook with me, but this is the Dreizinnen guidebook of the area uh, where we were hiking most of the time, and it also had uh, tours in the Praxer Dolomiten or in the Van Sint Praags National Park area, and I found that useful to have a little bit of information on the routes, so especially with the Via Ferratas and the more difficult routes we took. I wanted to be able to check them out uh, beforehand to see is this something I can do with Martin or should we look for a lower, lighter, easier alternative. Then my knife, this is a Swiss Advance pocket knife. This is like a multi-tool, five tanks in one, uh, yeah, light, good, some via coffee and climb on cream, which I find very useful for treating lips or feet. I didn't get any blisters or anything, but if you get uh, a little bit wet feet for a long time, then I like to in the evenings treat them with that so that they're good to go. I got a compete in there just in case the uh, sunglass pocket for my Scott sunglasses. You've seen them in the video, so they're linked below. Great sunglasses, look cool, keep the sun out of your face, and make contrasts look really good. And then there should have been here a field notes a pen and notebook, one of the orange one with the expedition, which are waterproof. And yeah, I've always carried one those, one of those on my trips, but now it's upstairs and I'm checking the notes for a trip report. Um, yeah, this lid can be taken off. So very easy to take off and then you can use it with this strap as a, what do you call them, hip fanny bag. And uh, did this as we tried to go up the Seikofel mountain on a very steep well because I didn't want to carry all the back and didn't need all the stuff in here. So this was great for jackets, snacks and I don't know what else I had in there. Maybe the camera, GoPro, yeah well some other stuff. It's pretty large volume. I was surprised and what I could all get in there. Good that was all the gear I used on the Dolomites trip. Missing is the food because we ate that, uh, except those two coffees. So, uh, lots of food from the outdoor food shop in Germany. They have a wide variety. Uh, our favorite, most definitely, was the Real Tourmat uh, curry chicken. That was insanely good, and we were just wishing both of us that we would have another pouch or two of them because. We could have just kept on eating. Cool! If you've got gear questions, hit me up in the comments. If not, I would love it if you subscribe. There's more videos coming as I'm leaving to Mexico in a wee bit for adventuring in San Luis Potosi on the Adventure Next conference. Uh, stay tuned for that and then there's going to be winter and ski touring and ice climbing and winter backpacking and winter camping and all these kinds of cool things you do in Finland in winter. So hit subscribe, there's cool content coming and I'll see you around. Bye!